What is going on, everybody? How are you? It is me. It is your old pal, the original gamer, Stevie Strell. I have a very important question for you, and that would be... Hey, you got your Coco 3 yet? Have you got your Coco 3 yet? And what game are we looking at today here, boys and girls? Where we're looking at the Apple II version of Load Runner as ported to the Color Computer 3 by Mark McDougal. And this is nothing short of an amazing feat to play the original, the classic Load Runner as it first appeared on the Apple II computer and was like 1983 or something like that. Um, and what you're looking at here is that game. Um, this was actually Nick Morentis' idea, which is a brilliant idea because I've played so many Load Runner clones right now. He says, hey, why don't you play the Load Runner port, which is the original Load Runner. So this is how Load Runner appeared on the Apple II computer, complete with artifact colors the whole nine yards. And this has been meticulously converted over to run on the Color Computer 3 by having all of the assembly language rewritten from 6502 assembler to 6809 assembler and uh, I read his little text file on the readme file and obviously certain other things had to be changed the way graphics are done the way um, the keyboard is um, scanned through assembly is different from the Apple and the Coco and so there were other differences but um, essentially the software is running as a line-by-line -line translation as the original code was written for the Apple II computer, so I think that is pretty cool. This is the next best thing to running the real original program on an emulator. Um, so it's kind of cool. So why don't I just shut up and start playing the game? And uh, I think I have to play with keyboards. All right, so, oh, then we have sound. That's cool. We have sound. Okay, you fall in that hole there, ding dong. Okay. What I never realized, because I don't think I ever played the real Load Runner, is that there's actually um, different keys for digging to your left or to your right. Because on the Coco versions, using the fire button, you kind of just dig in the direction you're facing, right? So, oh crap, he got me. You got me, you crap head. Um, and yeah, the infamous opening of the screen, that circular swirl, was very cool. And a lot of the Coco versions have incorporated that. Do you have anything? He's got something. Cool. He's got something for me. So what is the object of Load Runner? The object is to get all of the um, little bars of gold or whatever they are. Um, and once you once you've obtained all of those little thingamajig thingies, then the escape ladder presents itself. Now this game was released by a, a very famous um, personal computer software company called Broderbun. Broderbun made lots of software for lots of different computer systems. So this game would make its way to the Atari systems. Um, oh, I fell in a hole. I'm going to die. And I think when you die, you have to start completely over again, too, getting all your things. Yes. I have to start completely over with getting all of my things. This guy's going to come get me. Okay. So, you got to, boom, get away from those guys. So far, I don't think any of the guys have gotten any of the things. So, I think all the things are still out there in their original locations. We're going to find out here in just a minute because there's only two more things to grab. And if this is the last thing, then there's my escape ladder right there. Now I can escape the level. Yay! Yeah, baby! <laughs> we done dude it. We did it. We escaped a level. Now this one looks more challenging because there's like different things now this is a level that i don't know that i've seen on some of the coco clones i've seen that first level many times crap i, I hit the wrong key i didn't i wasn't looking where my fingers were on my coco keyboard um i was trying to dig I was trying to dig all right let's see if we can do it here all right you can do it, son. Come on, boy. You can do it. 
All right, now these ones must be the undiggable, impenetrable areas there, right? So, very cool. Curse you, curse you. I, I have to, I'm trying to do touch typing on a Coco 3 keyboard and uh, my fingers are not on the right keys. I need to be a little bit more um, cognizant of where the fingers and the keys are located here because uh, I'm dying way too many times. All right, let's see if we can clear a second level. So I'm using the Z and X keys as my dig left, dig right. Okay, I just need to get down. These guys are gonna freaking kill me. These guys are gonna freaking kill me. But I tell you what, the graphics are actually pretty good. Um, animation is quite well of your little dude running and whatnot. Ah, crap. I thought I could have got past him in time. Crap. Ola. And I noticed that there are some um, buried challenges over there. I haven't even barely been able to get the non-buried blocks to pick up at this point here. There are some buried ones that are going to require some, um, some cognitive reasoning to get out. I'm trying to, damn it, I have my finger on the wrong freaking key again. Oh, I hate you, Coco 3 keyboard, you suck. All right, yes. All right, well, I died. On that note, let's go to commercial. Go to commercial. Hi, this is Ron Klein. I'm at the 2016 Coco Fest, and you're watching the original Gamer TV show. All right, so you just heard from Ron Klein from the 2016 Coco Fest. Hey, you got your Coco 3 yet? Have you got your Coco 3 yet? Because I've got mine. So, let's... And by the way, this song that's playing right now was um, uh, written for us by the lovely and talented Curtis Boyle. So, uh, I think. Is this one of Curtis's songs? I get confused now. i got so much music in my playlist. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. If it's not, I apologize. Um, but I think his music will show up here in the playlist in just a minute here. So let's go ahead and jump back into the game and let's try this again. I've really got to keep my freaking eyes on the stupid keyboard here. These keys are so close together. Yes, speaking of keys, I didn't even try to press that one because I'm stupid. There you go. Fall in the hole, Jack Rabbit. Let's go. I want to clear two rounds and load frickin' runner. It's not too much to frickin' ask. And Jane, get me off of this thing. Holy crap. Fall in the hole, you idiot. No, I'm the idiot. <laughs> it's cool though. The only thing that sucks about this game is me. This game is very cool. This is the original game. I'm really impressed with the graphics and animation on an Apple II from like 1983. You know, very well, um, very well animated. The way the little guy runs and everything, you know. Another game that I just recall looking so well on the Apple II was like Prince of Persia. The animation of that guy running. I think that was another Brother Bun game as well. Um, there were certain games that for being an 8-bit system and whatnot, um, they managed to get some really good like cell animation stuff going on the computer. Okay, I've gotten all of the stupid things that I need. Fall in a hole, you idiot. Okay, thank you. Now. Climb the ladder and get the heck out of here. Get the heck out of here. Yeah, baby! <laughs> we done dude it. Now, can we clear the second level? So far, we have not been able to clear the second level. Can he do it? Yes, he can, says Bob the Builder. Come on, we can do this. You can do it! You can do it all night long, yes! 
fall in that hole, you flaming idiot. You're a flaming idiot. Alright, I now need to get Look at these guys. These guys are pretty freaking smart. I ain't gonna lie. There's only one hole there I can fall through. Okay. This one requires, uh, see, I was getting ready to say, requires more thought because you got to dig wider holes to kind of staircase your way down. But I screwed up. Ooh. All right. Well, so far I have not been able to leave level two of the original Load Runner for the Apple II as ported to the Color Computer 3 by Mark McDougal. But we will see. We shall see if I can overcome. I can do this all day long, people. Give me these things. Give them to me. Oh, crap. Holy freaking crap. Die, you freaking idiots. And this guy here is already anticipating my plans. How dare you anticipate my plans? These plans are mine. These were not intended for anticipation. Holy crap. Holy freaking crap. Okay, is that my way out? Come on down here, you idiot. Thank you. Thank you, idiot. All right. Will I clear the second level? I don't know. Let's find out right now. Holy crap! Holy freaking crap! I was so freaking close. Oh my god. Ding. We're getting the things. You. Oh, ho, ho, ho. All right. We must try again. But before we do, we will go to commercial. Hi, this is John Linville. And Neil Blanchard. We are the Coco Crew. I hope you're enjoying watching Stevie Strobe play video games, especially the Coco games. And when you're done with that, check out our podcast at CocoCrew.org. That was John Linville and Neil Blanchard of the Coco Crew Podcast. Make sure you check them out each and every month on CocoCrew.org. They offer a delicious journey into retro computing news and information featuring the Tandy Color Computer. They are the modern version of the Rainbow Magazine in your ears each and every month. And um, I am far from anything like a Rainbow Magazine. As I came to the epiphany the other day, I am the idiot abroad of video gaming. I am a person who has no clue of how the real world works and my ignorance is here for your amusement, people. I am proud to provide that public service. You need to die, you son of a B-word. Come on now. Get me down here, son. All right, look at me. I got that there ladder thing there right on up there. I'm going to get me all up on that thing. I'm going to bobby. Come on here, boys. Come on, boys. You're all stupid. You're all some stupid son of biscuits. Come on. All right, we're going to do it. We are doing it. Yes, we can. Can he do it? Can he do it? Yeah, baby. <laughs> Thank you for the words of encouragement there, Mr. Powers. Yes, we did it. And we're moving on to the next level that I've yet to barely almost kind of sort of finish once on accident, but I sucked. So, let's go. Let's do it. We can do it. As a matter of fact, if I die on level two, I'll even do the control N in next level just to see what level three looks like. All right. Dun, dun. But yeah, as I was getting ready to say, the um, the game logic, the uh, artificial intelligence of these bad guys, it's pretty hardcore, man. These guys are some evil B-words, man. They're evil, I tell you. They are evil. Get down! I hate the Color Computer 3 keyboard. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I freaking hate it. I hate the Coco 3 keyboard. 
absolutely despise it. Absolutely. It's unbelievable. Do I have a ladder out? I think I've got a ladder out. Okay. I think I've got my way out of level two. I think by George. Yes! I have cleared level two. I'm on to level three. Dead. Dead, I tell you, dead. <laughs> They're evil. These freaking dudes that are chasing me down are freaking evil, man. They are evil. Let me preemptively dig some freaking holes here. Alright. We're going across, we're going across, we're going across. I am now susceptible to the evil ways of the evil minions of this game. Ah, crap! A little B word got out. Alright, this may be my, is this my last life? I have, I actually have three men left. I'm not sure how that works, how the whole men thing works. Oh, here she comes. Alright. Let's make our way over this way. Let's try to get this doohickey here. I've gotten that doohickey. I've got one or two doohickeys left, unless some of these dudes are carrying doohickeys. These could be doohickey carrying dudes. This is a Curtis Boyle song. I remember before saying one of these songs might be a I walk too soon. This is a Curtis Boyle song, ladies and gentlemen. This one I know for a fact. Don't get up before I can get across. You hear me? Thank you. Crap, you just came out of the freaking ground like a zombie and got me. Nice little guitar riff there. Nice solo. All right. There's another Curtis Boyle song. How do you like that? We are in a Curtis Boyle roll right now. I got him in my playlist. All right. There's the ladder out. Oh, he died. Good for you. Good for you for dying, loser. All right. I'm getting the hotel out of here. Yeah, baby. Yeah. All right. I made it to level four, and oh my god, this is a friggin' nightmare here. Holy freaking crap, man. This is a night freaking mare, I tell you. Nightmare. You just go ahead and fall down there, jackrabbit. Curse you. Curse you. My men is one. I have one men left. Oh, grammar much? Let me get you, dude. Let me get you, dude. Let me get you, dude. Oh, that dude dropped one. I guess they can't carry. 
they can't carry across a uh, rope thing. I did not know that. I learned something very new and valuable about Load Runner today. And interestingly enough, Load Runner is probably one of the few times in history where a home computer game was ported to the arcade. It was usually the other way around, you know? I'm freaking dead. And there's the game over animation, which is actually quite good. So I made it to level four. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Did I make a high score? I did not make a high score. And that's okay. Um, I, I think this is this is an incredible feat of, um, you know, just somebody who's really smart, who knows how to do this kind of stuff, to take the original program and basically rewrite it line by line. And it's basically like translating languages, you know. It'd be like taking a book that was written in French and then um, writing that in English. You have to understand how to speak both languages to rewrite it and to not lose anything in the translation. So when you're converting assembly language code between different types of processors, they're, they're, they literally are, uh, I would assume, I don't know how to do it, but they're, they're like different languages. So it is utterly impressive um, that people do this kind of stuff. It just blows me away. It's the kind of smarts that I never had but I certainly appreciate, um, you know, it takes smart people to make software and to make games and to make the things that we as consumers love. And I am grateful for these people. And I'm grateful for this game because this is really cool. It's really fun. And this is such a, this is such a slice of history. You know, Load Runner for the Apple II is a game that just inspired so many clones, so many other types of games. Um, you know, it's just, it's an iconic part of 8-bit gaming 80s type stuff and the legacy of this game lives on today because there are so many games that draw inspiration from this you know so i hope you did enjoy this i sure as heck enjoyed it if you didn't enjoy it well then screw you and i don't even want you watching my videos go somewhere else all right but yes no i'm not a hostile person not much anyways at least when i'm sober but yeah no this was fun i hope you did enjoy it and if you don't enjoy it you know what whatever don't enjoy it it's you are free to not enjoy what you choose not to enjoy but i enjoyed it and i think other people hopefully will as well. So, I have been the original gamer, Stevie Stroh. As we close this video, we are listening to more, mu more music by Curtis Boyle as well. And um, what do I want to tell you? In closing, I want to tell you to listen to, I would like to ask you to listen to the Coco Crew podcast. Go to CocoCrew.org and listen to all their previous 16 episodes. Sign up for them on iTunes. Um, Stitch or Google Play to get notified of new um, podcasts as they become available. Uh, I would also say if you like the color computer, why not grab yourself a copy of this here book right here called Coco. Coco, the colorful history of Tandy's under dog computer by Boise Pete and Bill the Judas. It is a great fine piece of uh, printing in uh, publications and it's probably the best book in the history of the color computer as well if i do say so modestly and last but not least if i may do a shameful plug for myself if you do enjoy my color computer videos then why not pick yourself up a copy of this commemorative dvd that was produced for coco fest 25th anniversary this year it features over three hours of coco gameplays and even a couple of interviews and a special introduction by yours truly so if you're interested in grabbing that, go to ogstevystro.com and grab yourself a copy. So what do we have to say here today, boys and girls? Hey, you got your Coco 3 yet? Have you got your Coco 3 yet? If you haven't got your Coco 3, make sure you run out to Radio Shack. They are on sale for Christmas years this year um, for only $99. You can save $30 off the regular price. Just make sure your son Jimmy doesn't use it to play too many games and you're allowed to do word processing every now and then. That's important. But until next time... End of line. That's all, folks.